Dear friends, welcome. I will be taking Father Kevin's place today. Our gospel today brings the public ministry of Jesus to conclusion, John. It is a summary, a recapitulation of all that has gone before. The revelation of Jesus as word of the Father, revealing all that the Father says. And for John, revelation is judgment. In the prologue to the gospel, we hear, he was in the world and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. In the preceding chapters, Jesus reveals the Father's loving kindness in a series of miracles or better signs Indeed, this part of the gospel comprises what the scripture scholars call the book of signs, the transformation of water into wine at Cana, the healing of the royal official son in Capernaum, the healing of the paralytic at Bethesda, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walking on the water, his cure of the man born blind, and finally, the raising of Lazarus. The word of God, in which the world came to be, is revealed in the flesh of Jesus' love. In the seven signs, the very glory of God, the bone and marrow of our history becomes revelation. But the signs truly become signs, become divine revelation only if they are accepted. We must live, become what we receive. Jesus is the revelation of divine love. But love, because it is love, demands our response. The word spoken must be received, must be lived. The word we receive as command, as eternal life. For John, to believe is to live into this mystery of love, the divine intimacy. The divine word must be incarnate, must take flesh in us, in you and me so that it is no less we who are revealed, revealed as the children of God. But revelation is judgment. We are made, created to rest and abide in God's word, to be revealed in God's light and glory. But we may prefer darkness to light, the glory of this world. And finally, there is no middle ground, no neutral place of indifference. Finally, each of us must choose, and that choice is the story of our life. We choose by the story of our lives. The signs of the gospel beckon us as signs, even as they did so many years ago. Have we eyes to see, ears to hear, so that the story of our lives, yours and mine, becomes gospel? This was, of course, the choice of Barnabas and Saul. Saul, who had denied the signs only to become one. Paul's life lived for Christ alone. Perhaps we will not be knocked off our donkeys, if donkeys there were, like Paul. But like Paul and Barnabas, we are summoned, each by name and always in solidarity, to build the body of Christ, to become signs of God's abiding love. The book of signs ends, and we begin the book of glory. The passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. It is Christ's story. And in Easter, it has become our story, yours and mine. May we hear the word and hearken to it. May the grace of Christ Easter in us. May God bless you. Amen.